Hello beautiful people of the internet and welcome back to another video on my channel. I don't know what I was doing with my hands then, but whatever. Um, so today on this uh, video, I'm going to be replacing the radiator on my uh, Toyota Hilux. Uh, so it's a 2000 model, it's a diesel version. Um, so yeah, basically I'm pretty sure the radiator has been in there um, since brand new and uh, I'm a very intuitive person and my intuition said to change the radiator because I'm about to do a long trip to a drift event and I'm going to be towing my car so I thought uh, give the cooling system a bit of an overhaul um, so then I know that it's right for towing and doesn't overheat on me. So yeah, these are the parts that I've got. I've got a new radiator and I've got all new radiator hoses and also um, heater hoses. And while I'm in there and I've got the radiator out, I'm gonna replace all the belts. Um, I'm not going to be doing the water pump um, or the thermostat because I actually did that when I did the timing belt. And I did the timing belt at two, about 200,000 kilometers. And it's only got about 270,000 on it now. So yeah, it's only done um, 70,000 since I've done the water pump. So I'm not gonna worry about it and I'll just do it once I do the timing belt um, at 300,000. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I've got to do is drain the coolant, but to get to the drain plug, I've got to remove this bash plate here. Righty, got the bash plate off. Now it's time to drain the coolant. So I've just got to undo this plug here and let it drain out. All right, while that's draining, I'm gonna go around and just give the radiator bolts a bit of a spray with um, WD-40 just so they're a little bit easier to get out. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the grill because the radiator bolts come in through the front here and it's easier to get to them with this out of the way. So to remove the grill, you have gotta remove both the indicator lights. So to remove those, you've just got um, this little plug here that goes through this and through this. Mine's actually broken so um, it wasn't actually mounting on there. Um, so you remove one of those from here and then one from the other side. And then you've got a bunch of clips along here and then a couple down there. Um, and they kind of just push in and then you just pop that out. Mine actually, a few of mine actually broke because they're so old and brittle. So once that's done, you can then slide the grill out. So now I've got the grill out. I'm going to remove the bottom radiator hose just to finish draining any more um, coolant that is in the hose there and whatever else is in the system. Which is nothing. All right, now I'm gonna do the top radiator hose and this overflow bottle hose. All right, now I've got those hoses off. I'm going to remove this uh, positive cable off of the fan shroud. All right, now I've done that uh, positive cable. I'm going to uh, remove the bolts that hold the fan on um, and then basically sit the fan into the shroud and then it, it all can come out as one assembly. So if you leave your belts on there, um, what that helps that do is hold the pulley in place while you're undoing your nuts and it stops the pulley from spinning so you can actually uh, crack your nuts. So once you've pulled out two, two bolts, you've got to spin it around so that you can get to the other bolts. And what I do is I just use a bar in here like so. And if you spin it clockwise, it works against the grip of the belt. And it um, spins easy, like so. So 
so now I can get to those two. All right, so got them out. So two of the studs actually came out completely and then two of the nuts just came off. So that's all good. Now I can pop the fan off and then just push it into the shroud. So a little tip, if you are doing the radiator and the radiator hoses and also the um, heater hoses, uh, it's actually easier if you remove the heater hoses first before you remove the fan because it just gives you that little bit extra room in there. Um, I didn't do that because um, I just wanted to show it how you can do it without removing those just in case someone wanted to just remove the radiator. All right, now all that's done, I can access the uh, radiator bolts. So we have one here and then we have one here and the exact same on this side here. And then once I undo those, I can pull the radiator out. So as you can see, I put anti-seize on the bolts last time I did it, and it just makes it come out a lot easier. Alrighty, now I've got those bolts out, can slip out the radiator. So what I've got to do is, I've got to hold the fan in up against there, and lift it all as one assembly. Fan, fan shroud, and radiator. There we go, got the radiator out, and my intuition was right. Look at that, starting to leak in here. Behind the fan shroud. Alrighty, so now I've got the radiator out. I'm gonna go ahead and change these heater hoses and also the belts. Um, I am leaving those heater hoses, so as you can see, it's been looped, because the heater core is leaking. So I just looped it so that Jesus, so that the heater core wouldn't leak anymore. Um, I do have a new heater core to go in it, so that'll be another video. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna leave it looped um, and then change these hoses here. So yeah, I wanna try and do a bit of magic. Never done this before, so let's see if we can do this. Shit, didn't work. There we go, how was that? So I got all these, uh, Heater hose is done here, here. Um, I also put a new radiator hose on here. So it goes from that port there down to this pipe here. And got all the belts on. I like to line my belts up nice and square, or uh, nice and uniform, whatever you like to call it, just because I'm anal like that. So yeah, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and I'm going to swap over the fan shroud off the old radiator onto the new one and then I can put it all back in the car. So the fan shroud is literally just one, two, three, four bolts and then you just move it over onto the new one. Got the shroud on the new radiator, now it's time to pop that whole assembly back in the hole. So take my hand, join the army of the shadows. Going harder. All right, got the new radiator in, all bolted in. Now I can go ahead and put the fan back on. So when you're tightening it, because you're turning the pulley against the belt, so it won't actually grip on the belt. So what you have to do is put a bar in here. So you can hold this and then tighten that at the same time. There you go, she's all on. Um, now I can go ahead and put the top and bottom radiator hose on. And something I forgot to mention before, I'm actually doing away with these original Toyota clamps and I'm just using a normal worm drive clamp like that. Um, just because these are a little bit fiddly. 
and a few of them are rusted out so I don't know how much clamping force they're actually gonna put on the hoses so yeah doing away with it Alrighty, last hose to pop on, just this overflow hose. Alrighty, so that's all buttoned up now. Now uh, time to put some coolant in it and see if she leaks. Alrighty, so far so good. Just got to start it up, run it up, heat it up, get it up to temperature, and then uh, again check for leaks. So I've got this bigger funnel in here now because you want a nice head of coolant um, to bleed the system out. Because if you're just relying on topping it up here, um, you can get air bubbles in the system. So I've got this, I'll fill it up and I'll try and film it so you can see the bubbles coming out as the system bleeds itself. See, it's going down, and then some bubbles are coming up too. That way it's getting it all the way through the system and bleeding all the air bubbles out. Right, that's all topped up and bled. Made a bit of a mess, so I'm gonna give it a hose off and then uh, just give it a start up with the cap on and run it up to temperature. That way that with the cap on, it's gonna pressurize the system and then I can see if I have any leaks anywhere. Alrighty, so run it up, all sweet, no leaks, thank God. Um, now it's time to put the grill on and I'm actually gonna fit up some new um, side indicator lights at the same time. So let's try the magic again. Bam, there we go, all done. So the last thing to go on is the bash plate, but I'm gonna leave that off because um, I wanna service it tomorrow. Alrighty guys, gonna wrap the video here. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, or you can reach out to me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram in the description. Um, yeah, and if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. And have a great day.